Good. Hello to our viewers on Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook. Welcome to another in our series, Ag Chem Live. And today we'll be focusing on Irish potato production. I'm your presenter, Dennis Lecky, the product development agronomist for the Northeast region. Today's show, we'll be viewing, um, doing a pretty detailed um, run through of Irish potato production with a large focus on land preparation, the pre prep before you plant potatoes, because many farmers don't understand or make mistakes in the pre prep with their potato planting program. And as a result, they suffer losses from that stage. Um, we'll also be diving into a lot of the pests and diseases um, associated with potato production, as well as even the handling of the potatoes in terms of how you um, prepare your potatoes for planting. So let's get into it. So just a quick introduction. Um, Irish potato, it's a staple in the Jamaican diet. Pretty much um, in some form of a way, every single week we're eating some Irish potato, whether it be in the potato chips or it's fries or it's mashed potatoes, potato salad, you name it. But in Jamaica, we've been growing potatoes for well over 100 years. And we have had, we've been improving in our ability to produce potatoes over that time with improving technologies, improving varieties and um, management, general better management by farmers um, in terms of the whole production. Um, typically though, you know, we use it in our soups, salads, um, and it's a staple com, um, companion staple um, for um, other starches. Um, and it's consumed at a rate um, in Jamaica, you know, of approximately 15 million kilograms per year. And this is, however, increasing rapidly um, as a result of our production. It's important to note that at the moment, Jamaica, in terms of a table potato, we are um, almost self-sufficient completely in terms of our production. So that is a big thumbs up to our farmers out there. So typically in Jamaica, there are two main cultivars that are grown. Um, or there's a major cultivar, I should say, that is grown, and that is the spunta. This is the most popular cultivar for some more than 20 odd years now, um, being produced in Jamaica by farmers. Um, you know, pretty much every farmer knows of the spunta. But Agchem, we have also introduced and done trials and demonstrations with the Banba um, potato cultivar. And this is distributed um, exclusively by Agchem um, to the market. Uh, and we will touch slightly on Banba potato in a short while. Um, let us look now on some of the environmental um, requirements because this is key for, for you, the farmers, to know. It's not everywhere and at every time that potato um, is or should be grown. So we have to really look into those environmental requirements to ensure that you, the farmer, meets those requirements that you give the potato the best chance to produce and, and perform. So climate. Um, they grow best in the temperatures of about 16 to 27 degrees um, Celsius, um, which would be indicative that the best time then to plant the potato is in the cooler months of the year, which is going to typically fall between, say, October and January, February at its latest. Um, sunlight. The potato actually prefers day length time where you have a lot more hours of night than day. So from you having greater than say 12 hours of night, which once again is going to bring us back to October to about February as the best time for potato um, production. All right, in terms of your soils. Now it can be cultivated in a wide variety of soils. Um, but it must be loose and well-drained. So in that case, your land preparation should be done well in advance of planting potatoes. You don't go and say, okay, I'm going to clear a piece of land today to plant potatoes. It doesn't work that way. If you're going to be planting potatoes in, say, October, your land prep needs to start from at least August. And in that, you clear your land, plow it, allow it to weather for at least two weeks to a month, harrow, and then bed, bed the land for the potatoes. So this will give you that loose, well-drained soil for the potatoes to form the tubers and produce. Um, they also like slightly acidic soils with a pH between five and seven. Um, in terms of slopes, 
Um, choose areas that are flat or gently sloping um, with good drainage once again. Um, you don't want too steep a land to plant the potato on. Um, you know, a year ago, um, it was probably a year, a year and a half ago, um, in that Irish potato crop in 2018, a lot of farmers who planted on hillsides when we got all that, that, that heavy rain between October, November into December, um, a lot of potato farmers, especially those on hillsides, their potatoes actually washed out of the ground uh, and, thing, and they lost a lot of potatoes due to that. You know, in terms of even your drainage, you want to ensure that you have the drains in place that if it is that you have excess rains, you can easily drain away the water. So in that, you avoid lands that are prone to flooding and easily waterlogged. Um, I tell farmers many times that, okay, in planting potatoes, it's better you have a drain in place and then you need to sink the drain deeper whenever you start to get rain, more than you don't have a drain in place and then you have to dig one when it is raining because that is, that is almost going to be impossible for you to do. Okay, further digging into our land preparation. Clear your lands ahead of time. So, for example, you're going to use um, our Glyphos Max or Glyphos along with Penzine or our Prowl. Now, mixing both products together, what you have there is a pre-emergent herbicide and an early post in the, in, in the form of Penzine and Prowl, as well as the post-emergent systemic herbicide in the case of the Glyphos or the Glyphos Max. This one, what it will do is that it will actually extend the, the, the period of time at which you have control um, of your weeds and give your potatoes a better chance to catch off before you have weed regrowth taking place. But say, for example, time is of the essence and you need a faster knockdown, a faster burn, you can use a spenzine or a or scorcher along um, penzine and scorcher or penzine with paraquat in order to get that um, quicker knockdown of your weeds um, in, in terms of control. Um, and the application rates are pretty simple. For Scotch and Glyphos Max, or Penzine and, um, and Paraquat and Glyphos, it's 30 ml, 30 mils, to a gallon of water. And for Penzine, it's 20 mils to a gallon of water. An important note, though, with Penzine and Prowl, um, once doing the application there, um, it's advised because it is pre-emergent, you want it to soak into the soil. It's ideal to do it just before or after a show of rain for maximum penetration. Um, and with both of these, we also recommend using our, um, our adjuvant, our sticker, which is Breakthrough, for even more optimal results. Okay, continuing with our land preparation. Okay, in terms of plowing, you need to go at least 12 inches deep. And this should, once again, I should stress, should be done at least one month before harrowing to ensure that the soil weathers efficiently and then you can get a good plow, good harrow, and good bedding. Furrows should be approximately one and a half feet apart, especially for those who, do, who are doing the, the, the manual formation of the, of the beds. And um, or... 0.5 meters. Okay, now in terms of planting material, this is very important. Um, Agchem plant produces or supplies um, the Bamba potato seeds during the planting season. Um, and important things to note, because this is where a lot of farmers also um, start to suffer losses or start to see losses um, at this stage. You purchase potato seeds and they're not from reputable suppliers. And then what you have, potato seeds start to break down in the, so in the bags before you get a chance to plant them out. Or they might come in diseased. Or even the grade of the potato seed might not be say elite or the super elite seeds. It might be a more inferior grade potato, probably even a table potato that you get and you decide, okay, because it is cheaper, um, I'm going to plant this one. And we plant it out, and by the time the crop reaches four or five weeks old, you see the whole thing start to dry down on you, and you start to suffer your losses right there and start to cost your supplier. So don't take that risk. Um, 
So the seeds are the, 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 the main seed that you would see um, on the market, though, would be the elite seeds, which would be of a size of about 35 to 55 mm and weigh about two to three ounces. But you have the smaller seeds, which would typically come later in the year around December, which we call the super elite seeds, which are the 28 to 35 um, mm seeds. All right. So your selection of your planting material, and this is also another key thing. If it is that you have the big seed, all right? So super elite is a small seed. Elite is a big seed. You have the big seed that you're going to bit. Now, in cutting your, 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 your big seed potatoes, um, it is essential that you try to leave at least two eyes or two sprouts on each potato. Because remember now, it is from the sprouts that you are going to get your bearing. Now, typically, a pound of seed potato, which is a big seed we're talking about, will give you about five to eight, but depending on the size, as much as 10 seed bits that you'd plant. Now, what these seed bits do is actually produce for the... Um, will provide the growing plant with nutrients until it forms its own roots and can take up nutrients from the soil by itself. Now, each plant, and this is where you know that you're in production, each plant, so each bit that you plant, should be giving you between 5 to 10 potatoes. If you're not getting that, then I am falling below that, you know that something went wrong during that um, preparation stage. Now, if you are cutting, and this is also important for you to note, cutting of the seed potatoes should be done at least two weeks ahead of time. But if you're cutting it close, a week is, is really cutting it close, but it can be done during that time. But we want two weeks. This will ensure that the cuts that you make will heal properly and not allow any um, pathogens, any bacteria or fungus from the soil or the environment to get onto your potatoes that you're planting. Um, if early sprouting occurs, so for example, some farmers might, you might get the potatoes and they start to sprout from in the bag and you see them stretching out long out of the bag, break off those sprouts and allow it to give new sprouts. And these new sprouts now will be healthier than the older ones that were there before. Um, and also when cutting, the, the, the seed bits. Use a very sharp implement, a knife or a scalpel. But when you make each cut into a new potato, dip your scalpel or your cutting tool into some bleach water to disinfect. So this would be in, in ensuring that, say for example, um, you have a potato that was from, from in the ground before it came into Jamaica from the supplier. It was infected with late or early blight. When you are even something like a black leg, um, once you make that cut and you dip it and cut into the new potato, you, don't, you ensure that you don't have any transfer of the pathogen from one potato to another. All right. Ag chemas also, though, we, come up, we have come up with a, a dip program. Now, this dip program is aimed at ensuring that for you, the farmer, you get some amount of protection from your fungal and insect pests, as well as giving the, 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 the potato sprouts the nutrients that it would need to give you that rapid growth once you plant it out. So the dip now would typically comprise of a fungicide, which would be Topsin or Acrobat, along with um, the fertilizer and growth hormone, which would include our solid grow our kickstart, um, diazinon as the insecticide, and cyt or, cyt or caratrax, and then green stem and cytokine as the hormones that will now promote that early rapid sprouting. One of the other important things though is that after you have done your cuts and your dip, then you store the seeds, the seed potatoes, in a cool, well-ventilated area and wait for them to start to sprout. This now will allow them to dry and heal, so the cuts that you make, the wounds, the open wounds would heal, and ensure that the, 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 once you plant them out, there's no risk or less risk of um, environmental pathogens entering 
the potato bit and infecting your plant. So here we have um, the pictures of the AgChem lip products, our Acrobat, our Kickstart, Green Stim, Cytokine, and Diacinon. Okay, so nutritional requirements, and this is especially now at planting, or once you have seen, um, you know, the, the, once you're, you're planting the actual potato bit itself. Now, we recommend after you have made your furrow and then you're going to plant the, 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 the potato bits, you can actually pre apply through the furrows um, our AgChem 112222 fertilizer along with our Elixir Amosulfon 24% um, with 24% um, sulfur to the soil. And this can be done in a two to one ratio. Um, to the soil and then cover that fertilizer with some soil and then you put your, your seed bit on top and then cover your seed bit lightly. So here we go now into the planting, more in depth. Um, so you use a hoe um, if you're a manual farmer, but if you are mechanical, you'd use your um, bedding tool to, to open the holes, um, open the, the furrows. And then um, this you'd want to do at about three to four inches down the center of the bed putting your fertilizer once again, lightly cover, then you drop your seed bit and cover. Planting of the seeds now. Um, the distances vary between say 10 and 12 inches. Um, for like your super elite seeds, um, you can go 10 inches, but for the elite seeds, you can go to 12 inches. You have had farmers plant as close as nine inches, but that is carrying it a little bit close. There's a great deal of come Petition between the plants at that point for the fertilizer, as well as um, it also reduces the airflow through the through the plot, and um, you know with the reduced airflow, you have a greater risk of buildup of fungal diseases, bacterial diseases, etc. Okay, so after planting, um, apart from regular moisture, so the plants want rain or water on a regular basis in the early stages. To, 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 to grow and to produce. Um, but at just about um, two weeks after planting, going up to about four weeks, the, the, the following products um, can be used or should be used. And we recommend this based on trials and demonstrations that we have done over the years with potatoes to see how much increased production is possible using these products. So definitely our Omex Bio 20, and what the Omex Bio 20, once again, it does is with the, 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 the seaweed extract hormones in the Bio 20, it actually forces the plant to produce roots earlier and more roots and stronger roots. So it gives you a quick, um, you know, a quick turnaround time in terms of the plant growing up and producing. And this is usually applied at about 12 days. Um, Omex Fortify as well. Our Miller cytokine, which we know is the plant hormone now that would give us the, 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 the growth in the plant and ensure that we start to get the production early, as well as our um, kickstart. All right, so at about four weeks during the vegetative growth stage, and at this point between four to six weeks, based on the height of your plant and your relative environmental conditions, you might look, be looking now to mold your potatoes. And at this point in time, when you're molding, you can use now our cytokine once again, Bio 20, Green Stim, and Fortify. And remember, the Fortify not only provides the high phosphorus as well as potassium um, to the plant, but it has the phosphates and the phosphites, which is the nutrients, and it acts as a fungicide, which is the phosphites. And then also incorporate now our nutrient express because at this time now you would probably start to see some little flowers, some little white flowers coming out in your potato field. That's telling you now that hey, the potato is starting to put out its tubers, and you want to send as much food to the tubers as possible to get the production going. And you want, as we said earlier, five to ten tubers per plant. And then when we say five to 10 tubers, we don't only want five to 10 small tubers, we want big tubers, we want production. Now at molding, which is once again in the four to six week stage, um, we have 
our Abod our Abodam 15535 that can be used, or our Elixir 121217 plus trace elements that can be used um, as your fertilizer once you're molding. Now, importantly, let us start to look at some of what can go wrong in terms of our pests and diseases. Now, start with our pests. Now, if it is a common assault in many crops that we grow, and these critters are usually accompanied by ants, and the ants and the aphids work hand in hand. The ants are for protection and pretty much like how we would have cattle. You know, we have our cows for milk or for meat. Well, the aphids and the ants have that kind of relationship where ants protect the aphids, bring them to new plants, ensure that, hey, we can get the food, which is a byproduct of when the aphids feed on the plants, right? When they pierce and pull the juices from the plants, the nutrients from the plants, what they give off as their byproduct, the honeydew, is what? And steak feed the fungus that they eat, and in turn, that's how they get their, the ants get their food. So we try to ensure that we control ants as well as controlling the aphids within the plot. Another major issue, and um, I went to lump, I'll, I'll, I'll probably end up um, lumping these guys, um, the thrips, with white flies, because a lot of times farmers have thrips and think it's white flies that they have but it's two different pests, but they behave pretty, pretty similar um, in terms of um, how they attack the plant and how they behave. But they are tiny as well. Um, and what they do now is actually scrape the leaf surface and suck the sap um, off the potato um, leaves itself or the potato plant itself. And they're commonly found on the underside of leaves. So um, typically, if you don't turn over the leaves, you won't be able to see them, and they'll tip, they'll they'll probably fly away once it is that um, you turn over the leaf and they're exposed to the sun. So, if you really want to see them, um, late evening is optimal. Once the sun has gone down, they're, they're they're a little bit less active, so you can turn over the leaf and they won't really run because you know the sun is they don't have the direct sun on them. Um, you have the Irish potato flea beetle, which is another major pest that will affect um, the plants. Um, and they, their, their hind legs, their body, they, they jump pretty much like how a flea would jump. Uh, the common flea that would affect your cats or dogs. Um, so the flea beetle now, its larvae um, feeds um, on the tuber. And um, what they do is that they leave tunnels and trails um, throughout the potato itself. And, um, you know, with that kind of damage, you know, it's, it's, it's reducing the marketing, uh, the marketability of the potatoes um, that you harvest. Um, definitely one of the biggest problems that affects um, potatoes as well are spider mites. So um, pretty much... Um, the, the spider mites, they have um, eight legs. Um, you know, pretty much, I, I'd almost say they, they kind of look like how a tick would look. But they're very small, you can't see them. But how you know they're there is that you'll typically start to see your leaves wrinkle and curl in on itself. Because they feed on the underside of the leaf. And as they feed and pull the nutrients from the leaf, it will curl down. Now, Pretty much almost every potato farmer has had some kind of experience with spider mites. Um, definitely another bad boy in the, in the grouping here is the white flies. And they um, typically, you'll, you'll find them in almost every crop produced commercially here in Jamaica. Um, and hey, we don't even need to run into the, 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 the white fly situation because every farmer should be scratching their head and say, I want to control white flies, I need to get it. And we'll touch on that shortly. Um, the other guy um, here, and you're seeing him on your screen, is the white grubs. Now, um, some farmers might call them makakuku, and, and there are a couple other names. Not all of them not coming to me right now, but 
that guy there is typically underground. And um, you largely, you, you, the, the, the main time that you might encounter him is in lands that are freshly clear, that were heavily wooded, because they now would be in that area, in the heavily wooded area, feeding on um, decaying matter, tree matter, vegetative matter. And then when you clear the land there in the dirt and you plant your potatoes as, and your tube, as your tubers start to develop, what they do is come in and eat out some little holes into the potato. And these are la pretty large holes um, that you'll see, um, round holes sunken into the potato. Uh, and, um, you know, for, for, for many farmers, and if, if you get a really bad outbreak, I, I remember two years ago there was a farmer who we were um, working with. And the sad thing about her story is that we had no idea that the grub was underground feeding and the level of infestation she had. And, you know, we were doing all the above ground treatments, you know, using our cure and nisseron. Um, Caratrax, Caprid, you name it, for all the insects that you could see. But this one was underground eating tubers, and she lost as much as 25% of her crop due to the effects of the white grub. That was how bad an infestation she had. So it's, it's one that you need to know of and you need to be monitoring for, you know, and the only way to really know if they're there is that at the time that you have tuberization occurring, you ensure that you're going and you can do a, a destructive harvest, dig up a couple of plants and check to see if you have um, if you have the white grubs um, in your plot. But let's look at some of our pest uh, management products that we have available. Now for mites, definitely our run to is our Nisseron and Cure. And both used in conjunction. I find the best time to use Nisseron and Cure is that about four weeks after the plants have sprouted out, all right? And at that time, you use um, the Nisseron at half to one teaspoon or 2.5 to five grams per gallon of water and Cure at five to 10 mils per gallon of water. And what you get from this is our Cure would attack and kill the adult mites and then the Nisseron will kill the early instars of the mites, so when the mites are juveniles, as well as dealing with the eggs. And how it deals with the eggs is that it will actually make the eggs laid by the adult mites infertile. So yes, they will lay the eggs, but the eggs won't hatch. Then white flies and thrips. Now, you have to remember white flies and thrips have wings. And if it is that you spray them, and the spray is there on the plant right now. God made them with sense. And the sense what God made them with, they're going to fly away. And when they fly away, they find another plot or another area that has suitable food for them. And they stay there until your chemical wear off and then they look to come back. So what you have to ensure that you do is if it is that you're using a weekly or fortnightly spray program, you maintain it strictly in order to keep their populations low because you can pretty much never have a field that does not have thrips or white flies. It is pretty much impossible. But in treating, we have caprid, which can be used in rotation with our definite and danital. And the caprid you use at 2.5 to 5 mils per gallon of water, definite at 5 to 10 mils per gallon, and danital at 5 to 10 mils per gallon. And note that these will be used in rotation. So not like, unlike the Nisseron and Cure, which you can use together, these will be in rotation. And a nice way to use, once again, Nisseron and Cure, at four weeks, run Nisseron and Cure. And that typically, if your, 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 your management of your farm is good, so you have no other plants to reinfest your potatoes with mites, you practice the proper sanitation. So the clothes that you're spraying, you don't wear back on the farm. The clothes that you had on before you spray, you don't wear back on the farm until you wash and clean up yourself. Then you, won't, you, you, you can prevent reinfestation of mites for up to six to eight weeks. And 
For some farmers, it has even been longer. But six to eight weeks without any mites is pretty much one application and you're done. But if necessary, a second application can be done at six weeks. And this six-week application now would carry you right through to the end of your crop without any major issues of mites once again. Now, let's look at some of the diseases of Irish potato. Now, this one here, late blight, um, is pretty much what every single farmer would have experienced in one way or another when planting Irish potato. And, you know, the farmer said, Lord, me leave them a burn. Leave them a burn off. The, 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 the plant had dried down before time. And typically, despite the name late blight, it is actually very early. And early blight is typically very late. And when you think about it like this now, late blight, typically, you'll see what about four weeks after the plant has sprouted to about six or eight weeks. And what it will continue, it potentially can continue for the whole crop life. But typically, by about four weeks, you start to see late blight. And that, that is indicative. You see your leaves start to burn. You see what looks like some purple-brown lesions on the surface on your leaf, and it looks kind of, um, almost looks wet. And what it will do is spread to the tubers, and you see those, those water-soaked lesions on your tubers start to break down. Um, now, the other disease, or other major disease that you might encounter um, is early blight, which I mentioned, and it, it typically would come in a bit later in the crop life. But this is the one now that a lot of farmers, if, if you plant potato and you ever dig a potato, and when you, you know, it's in the dirt and you're so glad because it's big and pretty, and you dip your hand into the dirt and grab up this potato and you just feel your hand sink right into the potato. And then that smell hit you. And you have your hand and you feel like you want to cut it off because you don't want to carry it home with you. That is early blight. And that is what you experience from about six weeks right through to the end. This one, though, is that it doesn't do as much leaf and stem damage as the late blight, but where you see it is merely in the tubers itself. Now, our recommendations for a late blight in terms of a good late blight control strategy um, would be to use, for example, um, early out, um, sulcox, which would be your first application at about um, week two and week four, and then you now carbendazim with mancozeb, and then topsin and acrobat for late blight. Um, for early blight, we need to go a little bit more potent because those products don't offer that, that greater protection against the early blight. And in this case, now we're bringing our Bellis, which is our champion boy, along with Zampro. So those will be used in rotation. Um, also, though, apart from the late and early blight issues, you could encounter some fusarium wilt or bacterial wilt. Now, for the fusarium, definitely acrobat and topsin, especially acrobat as a drench, will offer good product protection against the fusarium wilt. And then for the bacterial wilt, you want the copper-based fungicide, like our sulcox. And then importantly to note, I mentioned earlier we use sulcox early in the spray program, weeks uh, two and four, or weeks two and three. And this is because being copper-based, it is toxic to the plants. And those of you who have ever used sulcox in pepper or tomato, you know that it can cause flower and fruit drop. It's the same way for the plant, for the potato itself. Using it at the time that it's starting to form tubers, it pretty much slow up your tuber formation and growth. So you don't want to use it too late. You want to give the plant that protection from early. So kill all chances of the bacterial infection taking it from early out using the sulcox between weeks two, three, or four. Okay, in terms of a late blight once again though, topsin, acrobat, carbendazim, and I mentioned that you could use the mancozeb with the carbendazim. 
Now, why is that? Is because the moncoseb tends to be is really a protectant. So what it does is protect coat leaf. All right. So it prevents the, um, it, it reduces the risk of your new infection of the, 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 the late blight itself. When the carbendazine goes inside and works systemically to help reduce that, um, that, that risk of infection also. You also have black leg, which now black leg for many farmers and you know the you see black leg occurring, they, they mix it up with probably um fusarium wilt or uh, um a fusarium wilt or early blight, etc. But black leg, um it's 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 thankfully we, we have no significant um issues are I've not experienced it in Jamaica significantly, but it's still important to note that and how you see this one now is that from the seed potato itself, that is where you start to see the rotting occurring. So typically a black leg infection will start from your seed potato. And this is why we say it's important for you to ensure that you have seed potatoes from reputable sources. You don't want to bring in or be planting seed potatoes from people who Oh, it's just because it's potato season and we can get that import permit, we're bringing in potato to sell to you, the farmers. Now, for the nutritional requirements, especially now at the time that we're having tuber development, because what we want here is greater sizes and more tubers. Because remember, we're at this 5 to 10 tuber per plant goal. That's where we need to be. And we want when that we have that five to 10 tubers, we're having say two and a half, three pounds, three and a half, four pounds, hey, even as much as six pounds per plant in terms of our production. And this can be achieved once you feed the plant based on what it needs, when it needs it. And here we have some suggestions for you. Our Miller Green Stem in combination with Omex Fortify or with our sugar express, and you know, we, we, we want the sugar express is going to be pushing the nutrients to the tubers itself to get those tubers to start to swell and get bigger and produce more. As well as though, importantly, our Calmax bee. Now how the Calmax bee comes in important, the plant is growing, the, 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 the tuber itself is growing and swelling and developing quickly. Now, with this development, Right, cells are dividing rather quickly. You want to ensure that you don't have the splitting and cracking of the potatoes. So, you, the farmer, um, you plant potatoes before, and when you harvest it, you see this big split in your potato down the full length. And this tends to happen, you know, in your spoon of potato, the biggest potato that you have, you know, split or have this big crack in it. It always happens with the biggest one, right? It's because all the nutrients run into that potato, right? Running to that tuber. And then when it goes into that tuber, the cells don't have enough time to develop. It don't have enough calcium in it. So it split and heal itself. Calmax B reduces that risk. And a lot, a lot of the times when you see this happen too, is that you plant your potatoes, tuberization starts at about week four to six, and it starts to develop. And while developing, and while the tubers are developing and getting bigger, they go through a, a dry period. So say week four, five, and six, you don't have any rain. But week seven, eight, nine, you get some rain. A rainfall, rainfall in for the whole of that period. The plants start to pull in all of this moisture and sending foods to, food to the tubers, but you don't have enough calcium at that time. And then, boom start to have all the splitting occurring. And you start to find that probably half or more than half of your potatoes split up on you. And instead of being A grade, they are B grade or even C grade. Now, what we're going to do now is have a farmer testimonial from one of our farmers who used the program and got excellent results. He's Xavier Latte from Shooters in Kellitz, Clarendon. My name is Xavier Latte. Irish farmer from Shooter Kellitz, Clarendon. I was planting Irish for the last 15 years or more. And then after I get introduced to Atkem by Mr. Parker, Dane Parker. And I get introduced to the Atkem 
crop guide, Irish potato crop guide. So I start now by the dip and I use, for the dip I use cytokine, topsin, solid grow and diazonal. And it work, I get more eel in its protein. I get like five, six, ten protein in one Irish potato. So, you know, more sprout, more eel. That's when I do the dip. And it helps prevent the seed from rot, from bacteria rot. So, the dip with the crop guide from Adkem work for me. Work miracles for me, wonders. After I use the dip, then I transplant. So I transplant my Irish potato and then I use um I use a selected herbicide that I use to burn through my Irish potato field. And it's Nabo S and Carazone that prevent the weed from from taking up the Irish potato. Then I go back to the fungicide now that I used to treat it. So I spray with Acrobat, Cycokin, Nutrient Express. So I use like three applications of Acrobat. But I mix it up with some Bio 20 and some, some Nutrient Express for the nutrients and I get good healing when I use those products. I use bellies, bellies for, for excellent rate and I use it for fungicide. I get better I get better result with my potato crop. I can I would introduce most Irish farmer, all Irish farmer you can use Atrem Crop Guide for your Irish potato. It works very good. We use nutrients. We use like the Bio 20. We use Calmax B. The Calmax B is very good. It prevents, it prevent, you get a thicker skin that it don't bruise easily and it will prevent it from splitting. I also use the Fortify. The Fortify help to turn it, turn back it in the root, in the fruit, in the Irish potato. So instead I get green and pretty, you go back down in, in the healing. So you get more fruits, more weight, or more pound to a root. Like an Irish potato root, I get five, six pound per root sometime. So I'll say that's a good crop guide to follow, the Adkem crop guide. And with Mr. Parker, working alongside with Mr. Parker, I don't have any regrets. So I can introduce all farmer who's planting Irish potato, you can use the Adkem product. It works wonders. Uh, what I'm going to encourage you farmers to do for me right now is uh, get your questions ready and start sending them in because we're coming to the end of the presentation now and we'll answer your questions and get some feedback from you. But what I want us to look at also now is our cost benefit analysis of using our uh, production program because this is, this is where it all lies. You want to see if I spend the money, the extra money, to use all these products and push the potatoes to produce, what am I spending versus what will I be earning? So 
This is based on our uh, one of our trials that was done in New Penn St. Mary. And we basically achieved uh, a yield per acre of 21,000 pounds. With and, and this is planting uh, 12 bags of big seed potato to the acre. That would be the, the, the ratio. So 12 bags of big seed potato, which would work out to 600 pounds. And the yield we got was just over 21,000 pounds. So selling at $65 per pound farm gate at the time, uh, we got a gross income of about 1.3, almost $1.4 million. That would have been your gross income. Then we look at the total cost for the materials, like your, your, seed, your, your seeds and your fertilizer, your spray, your chemicals. It would have worked out to about $248,000. And then your labor and planting material cost at about $194,000. But note that um, this land um, was prepared using mechanical means. So it was a tractor that plowed and did the beds and started the beds, but the beds were opened up by the farmers themselves, uh, the farmer getting in manual labor to help open the beds and plant. And this also uh, has as in it the spray cost and the yield, uh, the reaping cost. But what that leaves us with, though, is a net income of 943000 um, per acre. So for, for, you, for you, the farmer, it's a very, very good return because if you think about it, you're spending $400,000 and you're bringing in $1.3 million, almost one point four. So that's pretty much four times the amount. You know, you're getting four times the amount that you invested in the, in the crop which is by all means excellent. Um, if you think about it, for a three-month crop, uh, to, to, to invest, say, half a million then and end up with 1.4, there is, there is no bank, there is no investment pretty much otherwise that you could do to get that kind of yield. But it's important, follow the AgChem program, crop care program, put in the necessary prep work before planting the crop, in terms of your site selection, your environmental um, conditions that you need to make sure that you meet, and then plant, follow the program, and ensure your harvest and you do your post-harvest handling and care and marketing. And if you get $65 a pound at your farm gate, you have the potential to be earning net almost a million dollars. That's excellent by all means. So let's take our questions now from you the viewers. So Georgia, can I have those questions, please? And I know they're flooding in, but yeah. Yes. Just a minute, Dennis. So, Dennis, what is the black, what is black leg in Irish potato, and how do I control it? All right. So, as I mentioned earlier, um, black leg, you typically would find that in a, um, coming from the seed potato itself. So, this would be a, a, a problem. Um, Erwina coming directly from the source material, from the parent plant itself. Uh, Best treatment for that would be sulcox early in the crop life at about two weeks after sprouting above ground and again at about four weeks after sprouting. That should offer you control for your black leg issues. Okay. Jack Farm is asking if there's a sweet potato program also on Instagram? Yes, we actually do have a sweet potato program which is similar to the Irish potato program but not as intense because a lot of the fungal diseases that would affect this Irish potato doesn't affect the sweet potato. But yes, we can assist you with that one. Okay. MG Agritech from Instagram is asking, 
Has there been any formal trials done, whether by Agchem or others, in planting Irish potatoes outside the potato window? Okay, so yes, we actually have done that. And um, our latest planting period, I believe it was in May. It was late April, early May that we actually did um, one planting. Uh, uh, we did a, a complete program with um, five different cultivars and we got pretty good results from it. Um, not, not, not as good or as high as during the typical planting period, but we still got some good yields coming um, later out of later out of the, the, the planting period. But one of the major issues once you go outside the typical planting period, you have the increased daylight hours as well as you're going into what would be our typical dry period which, you know, by a hit June into July, it is pretty dry here. So if you don't have irrigation on the potatoes, then you won't typically get the production that you need. But it is definitely something that can be done outside of the, the typical planting period. And if you check it in uh, Manchester, in Manchester, their planting period is outside of the, of the persons who will be in the Guys Hill Belt, so St. and St. Mary and St. Catherine. That, that group would typically be in October. And then once they report January, February, you have the Manchester people who will be planting at that time. Okay, question from YouTube. Lulin Benjamin, what can we use to control the Irish flea beetle? Okay, great question. Um, so for the Irish potato flea beetle, typically you will, see, you will find that that critter is underground, especially during the day. So it's not until you turn over the soil or dig up the soil that you encounter it. So our best treatment, best recommendation for the flea beetle will be using, for example, diazenon or even caratrax, and that you can actually drench in. So um, best time to spray for all your pests and diseases would be late evening to, to almost night. So I tell my farmers, what you do, once you see the sun going down, four or five o'clock, start your spraying at that time and spray right up to dusk. Um, with that, all those pests that would be hiding under the leaves in the soil elsewhere would be coming out at that time to start moving around, whether it be for feeding, for mating, and, and, and that kind of stuff. Lulin also wants to know where can we find the Akim Irish Potato Guide? Okay, so for the Irish Potato Guide, um, our agronomists would, should all have them in um, their possession. However, at our office at 2 East Ashenheim Road, we also have them in farm stores, but you can also make contact with us at 757-002224, and we will ensure that we find a way to get a production guide to you. Or well, we can also email it to you. And definitely also, we have it, we can email it or even send it via WhatsApp. So provide us with your contact and we can get it to you. Next question from Instagram. Do you sell the planting material? Yes, we do sell of, of potatoes. So it, it's a very, very high producer. Right? Also being a newer cultivar because um, one of the things is that because it is still a, a, a copyrighted cultivar, it, um, it's only produced by one company right now, one breeder. And due to that fact, the genetics of it is, is very, very good. So you have less risk of it being watered down or um, contaminated to, to reduce the production that you can get from this cultivar. Question from YouTube. Glulin Benjamin, what's the, the cost you mentioned? Did it include the cost of the Bamba Irish potato? Okay, yes, yes, I believe it did include the cost of the Bamba Irish potato. Um, but in, 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 in working, in working, no, yeah, in working the costs, um, in working the costs, what we did is look at typically what the, the farmer would be, would be asked to spend, um, in terms of purchasing the seeds, the seed, the seed potatoes and the necessary chemicals. I think the only thing that we left out of this, um, particular, costing would have been the granular fertilizers that were applied but uh and that was that due at that point in time again we were not supplying the fertilizers however no that could be factored in to the cost 
question. My Irish potato often crack or split. Can this be prevented or controlled? And how do we go about doing this? Okay. So for cracking and splitting potatoes, once again, that would be a, a, a sign of, your, of a deficiency in calcium. Um, so in treating this calcium deficiency, which, as I mentioned earlier, you would see this occurring, especially when you have a dry period followed by a wet period during your tuber formation. If this happens, then, as I said, the plant will be pulling in the moisture, sending the nutrients to the tubers for them to develop and start to swell. And as I said, if you notice, it's always your largest tuber that splits. And it's because so much nutrients is going to this tuber, but it lacks the necessary calcium to help the cells to divide, cut the, tube, the, the skin cells to divide. And then you have that cracking and splitting. One of the things that you would also encounter at that point in time too is um, what would be like a thin skin. So it strips easy or um, the skin strips off easy and it feels rough to the touch. That can also occur due to the lack of calcium. From MC Agritech on Instagram, do you think we should start trials with cultivars that require shorter night lengths and longer day lengths, which will help with growing outside the present potato window? Well, definitely, um, AgChem itself, over the past three years, we have been experimenting with newer cultivars um, to, to see how, how they perform in terms of production both during and outside of the typical planting periods and with different environmental factors. So we have had plots throughout the whole island. Um, you know, we've had plots in Portland, St. Mary, St. Anne, Trelawney, St. James, right through, even, even in those non-traditional areas. St. Thomas and Portland would not be a traditional potato area. Trelawney as well and St. James. You know, most potato would be um, clearing down into Manchester and the Geisel Belt, as I mentioned. So we are trying to stay ahead of the game in terms of bringing in and bringing those cultivars that can produce outside of and give you even higher yields. So that's why, thus far as it, as it stands, we have found that Banba is the most optimal produ pro um, you know, producer or the highest, gives, has given us the highest yields based on the varying environmental factors that we have um, put it through and that's why as such we have actually marketed the bamba started selling it to the market and you know we have been getting very good feedback very good results from that cultivar question from O'Shane Jackson on YouTube does ag can provide production plants for other common crops for example peppers melons onion etc okay excellent question there Yes, we do actually have uh, production guides for other crops. So we have right now, Kalalu, your cucumber, your watermelon, pepper, sweet pepper, tomato, etc. yams. So pretty much any, any crop that you, you need a production guide for, it is something that our team of agronomists, uh, uh, we, can, we can have that put together for you. Uh, to give you to give you the, the instructions on when bed best to use the products as well as the typical pests and diseases that you might encounter. All right, so I guess we have no more questions. So at this point in time, um, I want to thank you for for tuning in and taking part in this presentation. I hope that you tune in for others. And once again, you know, I want to invite you to, to make contact with us here. Once again, we're at 2 East Ashenheim Road in Kingston. That's our main office. And our contact number is 757-002224. And our agronomists are spread throughout the island. It's five of us, five of us in total. Myself in Portland, St. Mary, St. Anne. Dane Parker in Clarendon and Manchester, Dale Smith in St. James, Trelawney and Hanover, Janai Johnson in St. Catherine, St. Thomas, Kingston and St. Andrew, and Sion Spence in St. Elizabeth and Westmoreland. Once again, viewers, thank you.